User Management. To add or edit users from the home page, select Administration. Then select Users. You'll automatically see all active users relative to your role permission. To set up a new user, click the Add User on the top right. In the pop-up, enter the first and last name. As this is entered, a generated username will appear. Next, enter the email address, phone number, role permission, and select Entity Hotel Access. Keep in mind that a valid mobile number is required if a user has a high level of access. If you enter an invalid number or a landline, you will be alerted. The next option is to send a welcome email. By selecting this, then add user, they will receive a welcome to inflow email. When they click get started now, they will be taken to a screen where they can set their own password. After setting their password, they'll log in and complete the onboarding process. They are requested to enter a mobile number for notification purposes. They can either add their number now, select no phone, or select update later to save their settings. To finish the new hire setup, go ahead and open their profile. Depending on the modules you subscribe to, you may have additional information to fill out. In this example, we're missing information for the general, labor, and payroll tabs. Anything that's missing will be notated with a red circle as shown here. Please complete all missing information per tab. Once all information is complete, select Save to move to the next tab. Let's review labor settings. On the labor tab, select the employee type. Exclude from payroll, hourly wage, Salary exempt or non-exempt. Depending on the employee type, you will have different options. For this instance, for an hourly associate, we'd update the average hours worked and date of birth. If this is a new employee, their average hours worked would be zero. This number is used in PTO calculations if your company is just now starting as a user with Inflow. If you had paid time off, turn this setting on. Then add the PTO type. Select the PTO policy applicable. The PTO start date will be by default the employee's hire date. You can change this PTO calculation should it be a different date than their hire date. Then go ahead and save your changes. Next, you'll need to add entity-wide settings to add the main position. Add the regular position and rate. Once complete, select Add to save. The entity-wide settings can be expanded to see the details like regular, overtime, and holiday rates. If you need to make any changes, click on the triple dot menu on the top right and edit. A special rate is when someone works a different position 
and gets paid a different rate than their regular rate above. For example, if a housekeeper sometimes works in laundry, but is paid the same rate, then special rates are not needed. If someone gets paid a higher rate to work in a different position, a special rate should be added. By selecting Add Special Rate, you're then taken to a pop-up where you select the position, rate, and effective date. The effective dates should line up with your pay cycle start dates. Once done, select Add Special Rate and Save. Additional options are to add performance review and ACA tracking, both of which are not mandatory. Next, let's look at employee payroll settings. The next tab is for payroll settings. This is only if your hotel uses Inflow's payroll services. Update the social security number, gender, and address. Next is the county and school district. These are only if the employee lives in a location with these additional taxes. If these are not applicable, you can put an NA in this text box. Then select the full or part-time option. Update the federal filing status. To add direct deposit information, use the toggle button to turn this on. Add the account type, amount type, like full paycheck, percent, or a specific amount. Then add the bank name, routing number, and account number. If you mistype the routing number, you will be made aware that the routing number is invalid. Then add the account number and save. The next section is for federal exemptions. Federal exemptions are only applicable if the employee has a W-4 prior to 2020. If they were hired after 2020, you will use the withholding section below. For federal exemptions, typically no one is FICA exempt unless they have a work visa. FUDA and state exemptions are employer taxes, which can be ignored. And there any additional state withholding amount. Then, for employees hired after 2020, use the federal W-4 form to complete steps two through four. Next is the entity-wide payroll settings for the associate. Using the triple dot menu on the top right, you can edit the settings shown here. Some of these settings copied over from the labor management settings from the prior tab, like position and rate. Update the state withholding and unemployment settings along with the state filing status. Settings will appear once updated. The bottom section is where deductions and garnishments can be added. By selecting Add Deduction, you can pick from the current list of available deductions, verify or update the amount, and save.
If we need to add a garnishment, enter the goal or total amount to be paid, add any comments, and attach all documentation related to the garnishment and save. Documents and Sales. And the Documents area is where documents like new hire paperwork and benefit selection forms can be uploaded. When adding documentation, add a description, select what type of document it is, along with the date applicable and upload the file. If using the sales module, you can select which employees should have access within their profile in the sales tab. Once the setting is turned on, you can add sales goals. Sales goals are like emails per day or week, phone calls, site tours, etc. You will know when all information has been updated as no alerts appear at the top of the user's profile. You will also know this by seeing the status update to complete from the main user page. 